Good morning, Blue Troopers. Oh, wow. I actually got some work done yesterday. Um, somebody asked me recently about aluminum paint. And uh, I actually found my uh, uh, aluminum enamel um, paint yesterday, which is, uh, I believe it's Model Master. But anyway, uh, I uh, used that on the B-47. And, you know, metal is a very difficult thing to do with models, but it's as good as anything I've found. So uh, any of you guys who uh, know the best paints to, to mimic aluminum, Leave in the comments section because I'd kind of like to know that as well. I've, you know, a lot of folks will use uh, silver or chrome and dirty it up a little bit, or or put uh, flat coat, uh, uh, flat overcoats on it and stuff. Things trying to make it look metal. And the aluminum paint actually had started the V forty seven with uh, um, a metallic silver, and then I used the aluminum. And you look at them, it's not. A whole lot of difference, to be honest. So, uh, I might finish that up today. That Academy um, B47 kit is is a pretty nice little kit. Uh, no serious complaints with it, as you would expect. A couple of fiddly little parts. Um, but I wanted to make it wheels up, and the kit's made to be put together wheels down. If you're doing it wheels down... <clears throat> you probably have a lot less trouble than I did because all the gear doors and everything are, are set up to be to be open. And they give you about six different versions of the airplane. You got a lot of parts left over, so it's really it's from the three hundred six uh, uh, bomb group uh, medium. And uh, I think that was Bernie Lay's old unit. He he uh, uh, wrote. Uh, the famous 12 o'clock high, which was about the fictitious 916th bomb group. And he said he just took his bomb group that he'd served in the 306 and multiplied it times three to get the number. Anyway, um, the, uh, of course there are other, it has a lot of other markings that that's just the one that's on the box, but, Uh, I got the uh, the wheel doors and everything closed, which is uh, which is a little bit tricky, um, uh, as you guys I'm sure are aware. When you try to make gear doors close, that has, if I could give Academy just a thought, uh, I don't even know if they're still making the kit or not. But one thing they do is is where the radio packs and the fuselage go. Uh, there's a part that goes in there, but there's actually plastic covering that area. But on the inside of the model, they thin the plastic, so it's very easy to cut out with an X-Acto knife. I'd recommend they do that with the gear doors, so that if somebody wants to make the gear doors close, they just leave it and uh, paint it from the outside. But if they want to make the gear doors open, then they could very easily etch them out, and there you go. Um, or, or they could, like some companies have done, they could stamp a part that's basically a closed gear door part that you just glue in there. <clears throat> Um, just a thought, <clears throat> but, uh, it'll take a little bit of putty to clean up some of the seals, but, but this model is just going to be a ceiling hanger. So, uh, I'm, or I might put it on a stick, you know, and put it on a desk somewhere. But, uh, um, I had thought about just blasting the whole thing in solid silver and uh, do it like the old desktop models, you know, that were made of metal that were like chromed or whatever, and just. You know, they're more just the shape of the thing, but it's like, nah, it's got a lot of really nice decals. I'm going to go ahead and decal it out. It, it's not going to be an award winner, but it'll look good hanging on the ceiling. <clears throat> um, hanging from the ceiling. And uh, made a lot of headway on the uh, Tom Daniel uh, Dornier 337A3. It's up on its gear. I had to add some structure to the gear. <clears throat> partly to toughen it up a little bit, give it, you know, because it's a long landing gear. It's a little on the spindly side, which if that airplane would have been made, it would it would have had to have been long landing gear. But I also added some machinery to it because a gear like that probably wouldn't be a one piece gear. It would be some sort of translating or or uh, um, 
uh, folding scissoring gear, at least to some extent. And uh, I was looking at the gears on the B-58 Hustler, which is uh, an interesting complex mechanism. And I'd always wondered how the B-58, if you ever see them with that gigantic uh, weapons pod slash fuel tank on the belly, it's right behind the nose gear. You're like, I don't get it. The, the, the nose gear doesn't fold forward, but there's no way for that gear to get around the tank out of the fold. And it turned out that it, it scissors um, and pivots to the rear. Um, and that's, it's got a, like a slingshot shaped Y bar on the main gear that goes around the nose of that, uh, of that uh, fuel tank. <clears throat> if you guys have ever seen a picture of the B-58 Hustler, that gigantic centerline pod, that is both a fuel tank and a uh, nuclear weapon. It um, it uh, carries the, it literally carries a nuclear bomb inside a fuel tank, which is still staggers my mind that Convair came up with that idea, but it worked. You look at the B-58 and you realize it's like the same thing with a sea dart, putting an F-102 on water skis. Anybody who worked at Convair either had to be certifiable. Now, whether they were a certifiable genius or a certifiable madman is, a, is still up for debate, but they were certifiable. Well, anyway, I found the props, the four-bladed props I'm going to use. I, I thought that five-bladed prop looked cool, but it was just too big. Um, and... Uh, got all the gear doors on it and everything. I'm trying to fit the canopy now. I've got a decal that put the radar antennas on the wings. Um, uh, I, it's a, the, the radar antennas are inspired by uh, the German radar at the time, but I'm assuming that the package had upgraded and gotten a little bit smaller and more compact. Um, so uh, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at with that. Once I get the... Uh, canopy on it and uh, get the cannons in it uh, the, um, it'll uh, get the prop permanently attached it'll pretty much be done and uh, so uh, having a, fortunately all those uh, Falcon Vacuform canopies I was sent have uh, given me a lot of choices but nothing's fitting quite right that that, that Dornier has a very oddly shaped uh, um, cockpit area so fitting the canopy as I knew it would be is, is turning in uh, I've got a lot of options but it's turning into a, it's turning into a challenge right now the best fitting one seems to be off the Henkel 219 uh, the owl so anyway that's how that goes and uh, um, I was missing a gear door off the Peggy, the Japanese KF-67 just built, but there were two of them in there. And I went to, thought about pirating the gear door off of uh, the other one, because like I said, there were two in there. The other one's a, a darker green. I was, I was gonna make it the dark green um, uh, Imperial Japanese color. And actually I've got the paints. And while I was, uh, when I when I started fishing around the parts to, uh, to look for the gear door. I was like, yeah, I had everything spread out. I'm like, oh, I remember, you know, just remember because I just built one. Well, that goes there. I just started gluing stuff together in no time at all. I had the inside completed and I was like, well, uh, and the next thing I'm building the model, I'm like, okay, stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just pre paint this, you know, I mean, it's on the inside. So the inside's pre painted and the cockpit area is built and everything. So, uh, um, and um, I stole a propeller off of that to go on the uh, Dornier. So what I'm probably going to do is use that one. And, and since it has a complete engine and everything, and I'm stealing a gear door off of it, I'll probably make it look like it's in maintenance or something, you know, make a little diorama out of it or something. So uh, anyway, that's where we are with that. I will uh, see everybody later. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, what is, uh, that'll be the question of the day. What is your uh, best way for doing aluminum paint? Or painting, you know, making it look like it's aluminum. Well, we will see everybody later.